In my initial review of the 24 to 105, I discovered that at 24 millimeters, this lens appeared suspiciously tighter than all other 24 millimeter lenses. There were a bunch of theories in the comments, all of which I looked into, and in this video, I'll show you what's really going on. So the field of view loss that I was seeing is due to two factors. First, lens corrections, and second, the location of the entrance pupil. I'll dive into each of those individually, but real quick, the other two prevailing theories in the comments section were digital IS and, um, oh, and focus breathing. I can confirm that digital IS was disabled for every test you saw in the first video. It was a good thought because the punch in you get from digital IS is kind of similar to the loss in field of view that we were seeing, but I can confirm it was disabled. Second, the focus breathing is very, very subtle. You really only see it if you're going all the way from minimum to infinity. And when you do that, you actually get a slightly wider field of view at minimum focus. So if anything, those tests would have shown us getting a hair more in frame when focused on Marcel Deschel up close. And now the primary culprit, the location of the entrance pupil. I wrongly thought that the entrance pupil where field of view starts would be roughly in the same location on various 24 millimeter lenses. You know, lenses with longer focal lengths tend to be physically longer, and I thought when you're at the wide end, it will be back where it would be in a prime lens. You know, I make videos for a living, I don't make the tools, and I'm not even going to pretend to understand what's going on with all of these various magical lens elements. But what I can tell you is that on this lens at 24 millimeters, the field of view starts way up near the front of the lens. And I'll show you how I found this out. So to find the entrance pupil, you have to do a test like this to zero out the parallax. I put a koozie on a stool in the background and obscured it in the foreground with a monopod. And if I just throw a 24 millimeter lens on a tripod and rotate it, you will see some parallax. The koozie reveals itself. Now I'll move it a bit farther back. No koozie in sight. So we now know that on this 24 millimeter prime, the entrance pupil is right around there. What I would expect, roughly the center of the lens. Now let's swap out for the 24 to 105. Do a quick pan. And there's some parallax. So I'll shift back a bit. There's still some parallax. So let's shift back even more. Now the monopod seems to be staying directly in line with our stool and koozie. So what that tells us is that the entrance pupil at 24 millimeters is right there. So if I do another Marcel the Shell field of view test and control for the entrance pupil location, theoretically we should have the same field of view on my 24 millimeter prime and this 24 to 105. So here I put a little piece of white gaff tape roughly where the field of view started on the 24 to 105, rolled a quick clip and then swapped it out for the 24 millimeter prime, which obviously now looks very far back. So then I shifted it up to where roughly the entrance people was from our first test on that lens and rolled another clip. And here are the results. The 24 to 105 at 24, the 24 millimeter lens with the camera in the same location, and now the 24 millimeter prime when controlling for the entrance people. And if we toggle back and forth, the field of view is identical. So the real world implication of this is that if I'm crammed in a corner trying to get the widest shot possible without switching lenses, I will have a narrower field of view on the 24 to 105 than I will on any other 24 millimeter lens where the entrance pupil is closer to the sensor. So those few inches and the difference of the entrance pupil more than explains the difference in field of view that I was seeing in all of those tests in my first video where I left the tripod and camera in the exact same place. Now, another factor that can impact your field of view is lens corrections. Here's what the lens looks like at 24 millimeters with lens corrections and without. These are raw photos from a Canon R5C, enabling and disabling the lens corrections inside of Lightroom. If you take a look at that bank sign, you'll see how much more of its name we are getting in the uncorrected image than the corrected one. Now, you might be asking, why am I showing you photos and not videos with lens corrections enabled and disabled? Well. It's because you can't. When doing those tests in the first video, I had all lens corrections in the C70 turned off. Or so I thought. I trusted Canon's manual that says, if a lens option is grayed out, then the camera does not have the information to make those corrections on the lens. But we know now that the camera is making those corrections. It's just not giving you the opportunity to turn them off because I assume Canon doesn't want us to know what this lens actually looks like naked at 24 millimeters. You can disable the like chromatic aberration correction and the peripheral illumination, but the distortion correction, the one that impacts field of view, and I think has the biggest impact on the image, is grayed out and simultaneously being applied. I also need to thank a local Boston videographer, Aaron Hartley, for lending me one of his two R5Cs for the tests in this video. 
By the way, there is a new firmware for the C70 that was released alongside this lens. The firmware update does not include any new functionality or performance increases of any kind. It's just compatibility stuff with this lens and a handful of others. And I think that firmware update is gonna be a necessity once the PZE2 power zoom comes out. If you wanna use that with this lens, you're gonna need the new firmware update. This video does not have a sponsor, but if you want to support my channel, you could consider buying my C70 user guide. It's a nearly four hour video course, everything you need to know about this camera in one convenient location, and it's linked in the description if you want to learn more. So I do love this lens. I know I talk a lot about why I love it in my first video, and I'll probably talk more about why I love it in my next video. But what's a little aggravating to me is that I know this lens goes wider. And the situations where you need a slightly wider field of view become much more common when you're shooting on a Super 35 camera like I am with the C70. And with the location of the entrance people being so far up on the lens, your field of view is getting that much more narrow as well. So having the ability to turn off lens corrections and get that wider field of view when you're in a pinch would be great. But the two downsides with that would be barrel distortion and vignetting. But neither of those would prevent me from disabling lens corrections in certain situations. I think barrel distortion can look sweet in the right context. So many famous cine lenses have prominent barrel distortion, and I think it can make a wide shot feel very wide in like a subtly stylized way. And the vignetting also isn't really a big deal because these tests I'm showing you where the vignetting is like, you know, horrible and goes to straight black, those are with full frame photo cameras. If you're shooting 16 by nine on the C70 or, or any camera that shoots 16 by nine, you're not really gonna see that vignetting at all. And I think it's worth mentioning that RED is obviously, you know, embracing the RF mount with a lot of their new cameras. And if you were to pair the 24 to 105 on a RED camera, you will not get any of these lens corrections. I don't have a RED here to, uh, to test, but I called RED up to confirm this and they said, yep, you will see what the lens sees, end of story. So hopefully Canon releases a firmware update so that we can choose if we want to disable these lens corrections and get a wider field of view with barrel distortion, which personally I would love for like 15 to 20% of the time. This video might feel a tad negative, but I just want to emphasize the fact that I love this lens. I just spent all day yesterday with this lens in my hands. I love how smooth the IS is. I love how it beautifully renders warm skin tones. I love the declicked aperture. That's kind of a game changer to be able to subtly adjust your exposure on the fly without ruining a take. Um, it's just great. I, I love this lens and it could get even better if Canon gives us the flexibility to disable these lens corrections if we so choose. All right, see you next time.